Thank you, everyone. As Vitali said, my name is Miland Pundit, um, and I, I lead teams at Habana that uh, help customers adopt our products. Uh, a little bit about Habana. I was actually part of Intel for several years before Intel acquired Habana. Habana was founded in 2016 to develop processors purpose-built for artificial intelligence. And in fact, um, for deep learning, for training and inference. So we have separate products for training and a separate product for inference. I'll primarily be talking about our training product and mention a little bit about our inference product uh, towards the end. Uh, we launched our first generation inference product in 2018. Um, and our training processor a couple years ago in 19. Uh, we're now kind of a, a wholly owned subsidiary of Intel. So uh, we have a very uh, aggressive roadmap in cooperation with Intel to release additional products for training and inference of deep learning models. So coming from Intel, I love to have the uh, Moore's Law type charts. Uh, this is actually one that came out of OpenAI. Um, and it talked about how the demand for compute for machine learning training is doubling now every 3.4 months. All right, so this is kind of a key driver for us, obviously, building out, um, uh, building out deep learning training processors. And along with this, you're getting, of course, increasing costs. This was talked about by a couple of the earlier speakers. Uh, costs are rising to train increasingly complex deep learning models. And we are seeing uh, industry analysis that indicates the same thing. This is from an IDC report that indicated that a majority of enterprises are interested in adopting deep learning models, but cost is proving to be a barrier. So our first uh, training product, which is called Gaudi, was focused on reducing the cost of, tr of training deep learning models. And as you can imagine, that includes performance, but also um, just the raw cost of the product itself. Um, this is something that we have succeeded with. So Gaudi instances are available in AWS today. If you have an AWS account, you can go into your EC2 service. You can allocate what is called a DL1 instance, and that is gonna be a server with eight Gaudi cards. And training your deep learning model on that server, um, we expect you can save anywhere from 22 to 77% as compared to training it on one of the GPU instances, for example, uh, one of their V100 or A100 instances. So we've, we're really proud of uh, the success we've had in achieving this goal. Um, now, let me get into some of the technical details of how we've been able to do this. Uh, we have, uh, you know, like many other accelerators, uh, a matrix multiplication engine, which we call MME. Uh, we have a tensor processing core, which we call the TPC. We have 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory on the chip, so we can certainly uh, accommodate the kinds of models that you might typically train on a GPU. Uh, but we've actually reduced the compute, intentionally reduced the compute on the chip and increased the amount of resources, real estate, dedicated to communication. So um, as Dr. Suri was mentioning earlier, a lot of deep learning training applications are communication bound and hence the Gaudi, to ar the Gaudi architects um, made this trade-off, and uh, it has it has proven very successful for us. Um, you know, one of the benefits is that we can train with smaller batch sizes as compared to what you might need on a GPU, and that certainly has uh, certain advantages for data scientists. This is a little bit about uh, what a Gaudi server looks like. So again, uh, eight Gaudi chips. Um, each of those chips has 
10 NICs built in. Seven of those NICs are, are uh, connecting to other chips over 100 gig ethernet. So we have what's called um, uh, remote direct memory access over converged ethernet or Rocky, which is allowing uh, fast um, uh, memory accesses from chip to chip. And then the remaining three NICs allow for scaling out to other servers. So uh, we get excellent scalability. And uh, for those who are interested, I have some very nice scalability numbers um, uh, later on uh, uh, if you need to see those. A Little bit about our software. So we have a software uh, product called Synapse AI. But frankly, I don't like to talk too much about Synapse AI. The reason is that coming from a data science uh, background, I know that data scientists primarily care about PyTorch and TensorFlow. And our promise uh, as Habana is that if you have a PyTorch model or a TensorFlow model, if that model is training today on a GPU or on a CPU, it will train on Gaudi. And that's all that the software does. That's all you need to care about. Now, there are a small minority of uh, uh, data scientists who are doing you know, kind of CUDA level programming. And for those, uh, for those types, we do have a uh, tensor processing core uh, programming layer. So basically, in a kind of variant of C++, you can write very, very low level kernels. But at the end of the day, most data scientists who are training deep learning models, uh, they're not working at that layer. And Habana with Intel, as Andrew was mentioning earlier, has thousands of people who can write those kernels for you and you can benefit from them uh, uh, all day. Um, so, you know, obviously underneath there is, a, uh, there is a graph compiler that is taking your TensorFlow graph or your PyTorch graph. This is how, you know, the, all of those computations are represented after all. It's partitioning that graph, um, uh, compiling it down, scheduling it for execution, uh, primarily on the Gaudi chip otherwise falling back to the CPU as well. So as a consequence, we get uh, very high performance for all of the operators that are executing on the Gaudi chip. Um, we've had some good customer successes. Um, Mobileye is a company that does automated driving solutions. Um, so they've seen significant cost savings relative to GPU. Um, there is, and I, I, just, I just posted the PDF of this presentation to the slides channel. So if you click on this particular page, you'll be able to go to a, a full blog that describes their journey towards uh, using um, uh, Gaudi. Um, you may have heard of a company called Lidos. They're actually a very large scale contractor to the US government, but you may be most familiar with them because if you passed through an airport in the last couple of days, like so many of us did, um, Lidos is the ones who are doing the x-ray machines. So they have um, obviously some interest in computer vision, which is a, an area of models that Gaudi excels in, but they're also doing natural language processing uh, for um, uh, uh, different applications. So in this case, they, they were looking at uh, basically the, um, the ChexNet and, and uh, COVID CXNet tasks, right? Analyzing x-rays to detect the presence of COVID-19. Um, and what they found is that compared to a NVIDIA V100, they were able to save 59 to 67% on training those models using Gaudi. Um, that's just a quick summary of that. Uh, for, for, for processing medical benefit applications, again, a, a kind of government uh, task that they do for the Veterans Administration. They used an NLP model, 
And again, here they compared it in, within AWS and they found that they were able to save up 66% uh, on training this model on a Gaudi as compared to on an NVIDIA GPU. So at, um, this is kind of proving out um, the, the value proposition. Um, and hey, I mean, um, if you're a data scientist and you have access to a large number of GPUs with no, uh, with no constraints, then more power to you. But in many cases, the, uh, the data scientists, even who are in that position, eventually they get a knock on their door from IT saying, this has got to stop, right? Because IT is paying the cost of those, of those compute resources. Uh, our Gaudi and even our earlier inference product has been adopted by San Diego Supercomputer for their Voyager research program. I think that may have been, it might have been referenced earlier, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, this is a very large scale supercomputer that San Diego uh, uh, has built out uh, using Gaudi and uh, our earlier inference chip was called Goya. Um, and they're making it available for scientific research. Uh, this is one application where I believe they've been analyzing satellite images, um, historical satellite images in such a way that they can predict the incidence and progress of forest fires, which especially in the last few uh, weeks and over the last few years, uh, many of us have been very, very concerned about all over America. So as I mentioned, today, if you have an AWS account, you can allocate yourself a DL1 instance and uh, see what Gaudi, uh, Gaudi processors can do for you. Of course, uh, Gaudi is also available uh, on, a, on a server basis, so you can buy uh, Gaudi systems from Supermicro and install them in a rack in your own data center. Uh, many of you are data scientists and concerned about, you know, what is it like to migrate your model? Might be training today on a GPU or CPU, you want to train it on a new accelerator. Well, our goal has been to make that process as simple as possible. If you have a TensorFlow model, generally what we're finding that you add two lines of code to your training script, and that will retarget it to training on Gaudi. Uh, similarly with PyTorch, uh, most people generally already have a couple of these lines of code. You just go in and modify them and that model goes from training on GPU to Gaudi. Now, uh, we're not going to necessarily guarantee the maximum performance that you can possibly extract from Gaudi. This is a problem that anybody faces with any kind of new chip, right? If you're going from a V100 to an A100, um, uh, that should be pretty simple, but then you may not be getting the maximum performance that you possibly can out of that A100. So, of course, the task remains to do hyperparameter optimization, to do maybe modifications to your architecture, to, uh, modifications to your model architecture to take full advantage of the chip architecture, but that's pretty much the same no matter, no matter which accelerator you adopt. So our goal has been to make it very, very simple to migrate to Gaudi. Uh, many of you may be using hugging face models, right? Great distribution of models, uh, BERT, BERT variants, and a number, transformer, all kinds of natural language processing models. So Habana has entered into a partnership with Hugging Face so that the, uh, those models can train very natively on Gaudi with maximum performance. Uh, we have a developer site called developer.habana.ai. Again, you can click on this image and be directed to the site. You'll see a variety of documentation, resources, case studies there. 
Uh, we have full documentation online, so you can sort of see for yourself both how easy it is to migrate your model and how far you can go to optimize your model as well. We have full resources there for uh, optimizing models in PyTorch or TensorFlow. Uh, we have uh, all of our software and uh, the integrations with the deep learning frameworks. All of that is freely available as containers from our, uh, our, from our vault.habana.ai. Uh, in most cases, you'll be using this through one of your Docker command lines. Uh, we have a GitHub repository. So I mentioned how easy it is to migrate the models and how f you can continue from then on to extract the maximum performance out of Gaudi. We have examples of how that can be done in our GitHub repository. Uh, so for the following you know, famous uh, models from ResNet and BERT, all the way down to uh, more recently, uh, we have GPT-2, uh, Dino, uh, we've taken the open source versions of those models that we're training on GPU or CPU. We've made the small modifications to target them for Gaudi. And then we've also done a little bit of the parameter optimization, architectural changes, so that we're extracting the maximum performance out of Gaudi. There's about 40 of these, and every six to eight weeks, we revise our software and publish um, uh, uh, additional and new models. Uh, we also work in partnership with uh, customers and, and, uh, and uh, uh, national labs as well uh, to look at models that might showcase uh, performance and that might be truly, truly valuable even to the research industry. Uh, there's also a uh, Habana developer forum. So uh, if you do happen to run into questions or concerns, there is a whole team of engineers within Intel and Habana that are ready and willing to answer your questions. Basically, there's a lot of developer support that we've built out. All right, I will now mention Gaudi 2, which is our next generation product that we first announced availability. Uh, well, we first announced it in May, and we're expecting it to become available later this year, um, and then uh, 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 scaling up our production in, into next year. So this is one where it's focused entirely on raw performance. What you saw with our first generation is that the performance generally lies between a V100 and an A100. But when you look at the performance per dollar, Gaudi wins out over both of those products. Gaudi 2 is targeted at just having the raw performance being better than an A100. And we've proven that here when you look at raw training throughput on the popular computer vision model, ResNet 50, and the popular natural language model, BERT, uh, almost a 2.0 2, 2 times faster uh, training on a Gaudi as compared, to, on a Gaudi 2 as compared to an A100. Um, how did we achieve this? Well, uh, some of it is just uh, the simple physics. We migrated Gaudi 2. Uh, we, we, we took Gaudi 1, which was a 16 nanometer part, and Gaudi 2 is now a 7 nanometer part. We did increase the number of um, tensor processing cores uh, by 3x. Uh, we increased the onboard memory as well as the memory bandwidth uh, uh, by uh, quite a significant amount. Uh, so we didn't, uh, didn't uh, skimp on the, <laughs> on the communication. Uh, networking is also increased. So Gaudi 1 had 10 of those NICs, 100 gigabit Ethernet. Gaudi 2 is going to have 24. And uh, now this does, in, this does involve an increase in power, uh, but uh, considering all of the multipliers you saw here, it's, uh, it's probably relatively modest. Uh, we got a lot of great press on this because we published our ResNet 50 and BERT results uh, in MLPerf, 
which as you, as you all probably know, is a kind of a benchmark that is well, well respected within the industry. And on total time to train the model, uh, we saw anywhere from 7% to 45% reduction. Model trains faster on Gaudi 2 as compared to uh, your average A100 server. And uh, I've included links to several press articles that talked about uh, that talked about really that milestone. I'll mention Greco, which is actually our second generation inference product. Have a very small number of uh, data points on this product right now, but uh, this will be uh, we'll be giving out more information on Greco later this year, and we'll be uh, probably selling it uh, next year. So this again has gone from our first generation Goya product, which was a 16 nanometer product, to seven nanometers. Uh, we're increasing the onboard memory, uh, increased uh, compute in terms of both uh, data types that it supports, as well as for inference, uh, some amount of uh, decode capability uh, is really, really beneficial. So we've moved some of that decode capability into the silicon. Um, this is a, a form factor that's half the size of our first generation Go uh, Goya product. Uh, so as a result, you can fit twice as many of them into your server or your rack or your data center, which is really where this is targeted. And this has been done all with a significant reduction in power. So I don't have performance numbers today, but I hope to come back uh, next year and, and talk more about uh, those performance numbers on Goya. I breezed through that very quickly. Any questions? Yeah? What kind of software strategy do you recommend for scaling out? Yeah, software strategy for scaling out, right? Um, what you'll see is um, uh, all of our all of the models in our GitHub repository. Um, we publish performance for them uh, scaling out, um, and uh, we include instructions on how to scale them out using the standard libraries that you're already using. So PyTorch, I believe, has a distributed, uh, distributed PyTorch library on uh, TensorFlow. I know there's Horovod is a very popular library. So we have full instructions on how to use those libraries to do scale up. Any plans or research for model parallelism? Yes. So I believe that DeepSpeed is a popular library, I believe, for uh, PyTorch model parallelism. So this is something that we, I know we're working on it right now. It may be there already within, in fact, on GPT-2, I believe, is built on DeepSpeed, which is a model parallelism library for PyTorch. And it was on my list, so it is there in our, in our GitHub repository. So the answer is yes, we do, we do have our first initial support for model parallelism as well. More questions? Yes. So thank you very much for the last one. It was very interesting. Um, I just want to use you to see you and the power of the daughter. I just wanted to ask like, you if you want to translate to power per energy. So it's energy also affects like 70% of dollars. Uh, power per what of use? Um, so let's say if you, if you train a model and you save 70% of the cost, does it translate to saving 70% of the energy as well? 70% of the... Power consumption. Uh, that's a good question. We haven't done power comparisons against NVIDIA. Uh, and also you're talking about you're talking about on inference, right? Or are you talking about the power of training? Yeah, I don't have benchmarks, unfortunately, on the power consumption during the course of that training. But in terms of I would expect it to be lower just because we have, uh, uh, you know, a smaller amount, a smaller number of compute units per chip, and uh, you know, uh, 
But I, yeah, so I would, my gut would tell me that it's lower, but we don't have published benchmarks on power. Sorry. Thank you.